Welcome back everybody to another Motobot video. You join us again at EICMA in Milan for the biggest and best motorcycle show, in my opinion, in the world. And we're back at the Moto Marini stand because they've got loads of new bikes for this year and they do look quite impressive. But I think the one that really stands out to me the most is this, the Corsaro Sport 750, a brand new sports bike for 2024. And yeah, it's been a bit of a surprise to me because it wasn't really previously on my radar. So could it be the surprise success of the show? Well, let's go through all the details to find out. Now at the heart of it, we've got this new 90 degree V-twin. It's 749 cc. And Marini say it's got a bunch of innovative solutions like the dry sump, which makes the dimensions of it more compact. And it also gets a counter-rotating crankshaft, which of course helps with agility and nimbleness and changes of direction. In terms of power, they say it's gonna make 96 horsepower peak. If you've watched any of my other Moto Marini videos from this week, you'll know they've been pretty brief with the details on some of these bikes, so no no RPM figure, no peak torque figures or anything like that. But they do say with this particular bike, there will be an A2 friendly version that comes in around the 48 horsepower mark. So yeah, given those power figures, this is realistically in that sort of competition area of something like the Aprilia RS660, or maybe even a good alternative if you want something a little more chilled out than the Ducati Supersport 950. And it is, of course, Euro 5 Plus emissions regulations compliant. And I've got to say, they've done a fantastic job visually on that exhaust system. The twin silencers at the rear look absolutely brilliant. As for the chassis, well, with some of their other bikes, they've done this mix of aluminium and also steel trellis and you can see it again on this bike there's a trellis section that joins the subframe down to where the sort of swing arm pivot and foot pegs are and then also you've got another aluminium section at the front certainly makes for a very interesting visual design and i guess it might also help a little with weight optimization in fact with this bike they say it comes in at under 200 kilograms curb so nice and slender in terms of suspension we've got an upside down fork at the front fully adjustable and i've got to say some of the components on these new marini bikes are really quite Quite spectacular to look at. I mean, look at the fork adjusters in the cockpit there on this bike. They're sort of like red anodized and a really nice detail. And also that top yoke, which looks like it's sort of billet CNC and the sort of intricate knuckles down at the bottom of the fork there with the Moto Marini logo and the detail where the caliper mounts. It's just full of interesting little designs that really do make it nice to look at. At the rear, we've got a monoshock with a progressive linkage. And then naturally with it being a sporty road bike, you've got 17 inch cast wheels front and rear. And it's a 120 by 70 tire at the front and then a 180 by 55 at the rear. This particular bike comes on Pirelli's Diablo Rosso four tires. They're really a good all-rounder, quite sporty, but also decent on the road. And in my experience of riding them, perfectly suited to a bike of this nature. And then braking is from Brembo. We've got four pot radially mounted monoblock calipers, so nice and sporty. Twin 320mm discs, so nice and big. Braided steel hoses. And then a Brembo radial master cylinder for a crisp feel at the lever and a matching Brembo hydraulic clutch lever. Then you've got a two-pot caliper at the rear from Brembo as well, and that's on a 220 mil disc. Ergonomically, they say this bike comes in at 820 mil in the seat height, so pretty moderate, I guess. Very much in line with other super sport bikes, we were just looking at the new CBR 600 RR. That's it's at 820 mil as well. Naturally, with a bike of this nature, the foot pegs are fairly high and far back so that you've got plenty of ground clearance. But what has surprised me a little bit is just how low and forward the clip-on bars are. Quite often with bikes in this sort of power range, things like the RS660 from Aprilia, which I just mentioned, they make the riding position quite chilled out in order to give it broad appeal, I guess. It makes it more of a road and track bike rather than just a dedicated track weapon. But this looks more so similar to the CBR600, pretty far forward and low. And so yeah, I wouldn't expect this bike to be a easy going Ninja 650 type affair. It's gonna be a bike that wants to be ridden fast. Now, before we get onto the next feature, I just wanna say a massive Massive thanks to our sponsors this week, and that's Metzler Tires and Insta360. We use Insta360's X3 camera to capture all of our riding footage back home, and it's been an absolute game changer for our workflow. The thing that I really love about 360 cameras is you can just mount them pretty much anywhere on the bike and not care too much about how it's framed, whether it's level, or which way it's pointing, because once you stop, you can just download the footage into the app, and from there, you can reframe it and keyframe it and move it around and also export 
landscape or portrait. And so it's super flexible and easy to use and brings a whole new creativity to recording and sharing your rides. We absolutely love using them. So do check out the link down in the description below to pick up yours. And also you'll find a code down there which gets you a free gift with every X3 purchase. So once again, a massive thanks to Insta360 for their support. It's allowed us to do way more videos this week. So we really appreciate it. And with that, back to the bike. Now in terms of the tech, you can see you've got a full color TFT display in the cockpit there. And from the 650 bikes that I borrowed previously, they've got a really nice design style in their TFT displays. And so I'd expect that to carry over here. Interestingly, there's no word on sort of riding modes or rider rates. So maybe that's all still TBC. But if you look at a bike like the Milano, which we filmed a couple of days ago, that's going to come with four modes, all of which affect power, traction control intervention and ABS. So I'd expect at least that from this bike. Also with the Marinis, you typically get phone connectivity and navigation on the dash. And then we can see it's got LED lighting all round. Again, with their typical design flare, I particularly like the tail light on this bike. All round, this bike just looks absolutely spectacular to me. It's really daring and bold in the sort of visuals and just looks every bit as exciting as I think an Italian sports bike should. Absolutely no indication of the price on this one and it's not really an evolution of an existing model, so there's not really a benchmark to sort of go off. The Aprilia I mentioned, the RS660, well that bike starts at around 10 and a half grand, but I think this looks, even though it's similar in power, a bit more premium in the spec and the build, and so realistically I do think it's going to come in a decent amount above that. As always though, I'd love to know what you think of it, so do let me know down in the comments, and do you think this looks as appealing as the Aprilia I just mentioned, or is there another sports bike you'd buy over this? Do let me know, I always enjoy reading your comments. Also check out our Eichmer playlist, which is on the screen right now. Absolutely loads of great bikes we've shot this week, so do have a look. Hit subscribe if you've not already to see all of our videos as soon as they go live. Many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.